Rare Games started in 1985, and since then they've made a tremendous amount of games, of all varieties, from racing to shooters and of course, platformers. But what are the studio's best games? Hey Shackers, Greg here, and today I'll be counting down Rare's top 10 best games. Now since Rare has created over 100 games, yeah, that's right, over 100 games. And not all are winners either. Remember Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Yeah, that was pretty bad. But others are remembered fondly, like Snake, Rattle, and Roll. Rare started out developing games on the NES, then Game Boy, Super Nintendo, and of course, their flagship games found on the Nintendo 64. Fun fact, Nintendo bought a 25% stake in the company that gradually increased to 49%, making Rare a second party developer for Nintendo. During this time, Rare started selling their games under the name Rareware, but the games were still being developed by Rare. Since then, they have stumbled a tad, being acquired by Microsoft in 2002, and while their reboot of Killer Instinct fell below expectations, as well as their multiple Kinect games they were most likely forced to make, Rare has still had its share of iconic games that hold up today. I've reached out to our community and Twitter to see what Rare games are the best, so without further ado, these are the top 10 Rare games. You want some great stuff? Yeah! I think the round's on me. I'm gonna get tanked tonight. <laughs> what is Blast Corps? Well, it's a game where you destroy buildings and structures to allow a transport carrying a nuclear missile load to travel safely from point A to point B. At a quick glance, the game may look rather dated in a bad way, but the unique game mechanics and multiple vehicles you could pilot, each with its own method of destruction, kept things interesting. It was also one of the first games on the N64 to feature 100% polygon models. With its addictive gameplay and fully destructible environments, it's no wonder so many people remember it fondly today. No trouble at all. We don't have an image record, and we can't find any official files. All we have is the name. Good luck, Dr. Dark. Releasing at the end of the N64's life cycle, Perfect Dark hit our screens in the year 2000. It was similar to Rare's smash hit GoldenEye 007, which had released a few years earlier. The game has an interesting futuristic story and the same great first-person gun gameplay of its predecessor, Goldeneye. Perfect Dark focused more on its cyberpunk story more than anything else, and featured interesting characters, set pieces, and a ton of cutscenes. You have failed, Easton. You are a flawed device, and we need you no longer. Just try it, you Scandinavian freak! The game certainly was ahead of its time, taking old ideals and improving on them, as well as making new ones. However, the game was messy in terms of a dipping frame rate, and the voice work was all over the place. Elvis! I can't detach that tube from the fuselage! Can you take it out? It's okay, Joanna. What's this? Its shortcomings are still small when compared to the growth we saw since Rare's Goldeneye. Available for your home in 1995, only on Nintendo Ultra 64. Killer Instinct. In an arcade world that was being dominated by Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, out came KI, or Killer Instinct, introducing a cast of interesting fighters with varying mechanics, and of course, the forever known sound effect of the Ultra Combo. <laughs> Sure, the series hasn't had the staying power of Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat today, but it was a great 90s fighting game and always will be. Supreme victory. 
We've all played it in some capacity, whether it was on Game Boy, NES, or my personal favorite, Arcade. Battletoads is one of the most famous beat-em-ups to ever hit home console. The legacy in Battletoads isn't just the great combat, creative characters, or interesting level design, but in its difficulty. Most infamously, the Turbo Tunnel level, which challenged you to memorize a path while racing atop a hover bike. The difficulty was doubled if you and a friend play together. If one of you messed up more than the other, both players got a game over. It's a game that still holds up today as a fun yet super challenging experience. It all started yesterday. What a day that was. It's what I call a bad fur day. Commonly misknown for being the only mature title on the N64, there were actually several others. Resident Evil 2, Turok, Perfect Dark, and GoldenEye to name a few. Conker's Bad Fur Day took the great platforming of Banjo-Kazooie and combined it with a huge hub world to explore with adult situations. You know, in my own country I am a king! Oh, really? Yeah, that bitch threw me out. Apparently the hive keeps getting stolen. Well, I don't care. I couldn't fit in the f thing anyway. You see how fat she is, bitch. Conker and his band of characters he comes across are fun, charismatic, and of course, most of them are horrible people. What you do that for? Dumb s***. Yeah, 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 dumb s***. <laughs> yeah. Why is it you have to repeat everything I say? Uh, uh, I, I, I don't repeat everything. Uh, I, do I? Yes, you do, actually. Oh, sorry. Large level design with great set pieces, puzzles, secrets, and platforming was wrapped near flawlessly in a nice neat package, with adult humor in abundance, featuring sexual innuendos. Hey, oh, bloody hell! Come on, put it on, Trick! Help. Put it on, I like it like that. Oh! Oh! Fan fing tastic! And of course, foul language. You better get this fat ass bitch off of my back, Prado! The multiplayer was also absolutely fantastic for the time. Our own CEO at Shaq News remembers the Nintendo booth at E3 promoting Conker's Bad Fur Day, to which Nintendo had an open bar. Crazy stuff. Conker, honey, fancy going for a bounce? A bounce? Okay. Now this is what I call a platform game. If one game were to rival Super Mario 64 during the days of the Nintendo 64, it would have to be Banjo-Kazooie. Featuring a huge cast of colorful characters, great gameplay mechanics, puzzles, secrets, and mini-games, Banjo-Kazooie had literally everything that made a 3D platformer great. Couple this with an awesome soundtrack and world design, and you have almost a perfect platformer. The game even holds up well today, being featured in the Rare Replay bundle with HD textures and graphics. The bear and bird may have tripped over themselves lately, but they were on top for a while and in the best way. If you're a fan of Mario 64, Mario Odyssey, or 3D Mario games in general and you've never played this, check it out. You'll be happy you did. In 1997, the world as we knew it would change, in two ways. The first was that movie video games didn't have to be bad, and the second was how GoldenEye 007 on the N64 would change the way console gamers would view first-person shooters. The level design and controls for FPS hadn't really been perfected yet on console, and prior games that tried it didn't fare too well. 
For some reason, GoldenEye 007 and the year 1997 was the time the N64 got most of their first-person shooters. Sure, the game looks muddy now and hasn't aged well, but the game's controls combined with an amazing couch multiplayer mode just showed us how forward-thinking Rare was back in the day. Just remember, picking odd job was cheating, and if you pick him, you're a cheater. Cheap, cheap cheater. <laughs> chicken, Peter, you just a little chicken. Cheap, 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 cheap. system seller has been pretty absent for this generation of gaming. I mean, sure, PS4 has The Last of Us, Horizon Zero Dawn, and a few others, while Nintendo Switch has, of course, Zelda and Mario. But the Xbox One has had a bit of a struggle with very few exclusives, like Halo, RIP, and Crackdown 3 when it releases sometime in 2045. However, it's safe to actually claim that Sea of Thieves is the game that will make even the biggest Nintendo or PS4 fanboy buy an Xbox One. Yes, I realize it's on PC too, but let's just focus on Xbox here. Sea of Thieves is literally everything a video game should be, giving players a huge world to explore and giving them options to play in that world. The game is just magnificent, doing things we haven't seen in games in years, while innovating with new ideas at the same time. This game may well bring Rare up to the great standards they had during the days of the N64. It's like we say over here at Shack News, if you don't like Sea of Thieves, then you just don't like video games. I'll find us a crew. There's bound to be some sailors on this rock crazy as you. One can only hope. Take what you can. Give nothing back. So seriously, for years I thought this game was a Nintendo first party game. Of course because Donkey Kong was in it, but also due to the addictive fun platforming and world design. However, it was a rare game, and Donkey Kong Country is one of the greatest classic platformers to grace our Super Nintendos. With interesting boss battles, fun bonus levels with Animal Pals, and an abounding amount of secrets, it offered loads of replay value and innovation. It was released in 1994, and by 1995, Donkey Kong had taken the world by storm. The game also introduced us to some iconic characters for the first time, like Diddy Kong. Donkey Kong Country still holds up today incredibly well. Now before I get to number one, because there were literally hundreds of games that Rare has made since 1985, let's look at some honorable mentions. There are many times a sequel is made after a wildly successful game. Call of Duty is notorious for this. However, Kong Mania had swept over the United States. Rare was determined to improve their franchise, or er, Nintendo's franchise, or er, both. Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Conquest, no it's not Diddy Kong's Quest, but Diddy's Conquest. Get it? Kong. Quest. It took me years to get that. Anyway, Rare wanted to demonstrate that they could not only improve this franchise, but wanted to do so with their characters they introduced and created. Donkey Kong takes a back seat in this game, and instead you control Diddy and Dixie. Each brings their own playstyle to the mix. 
Diddy can still cartwheel and move fast, while Dixie can glide using her banana hair thing. This wasn't the only change though. Amazing level design was shown. Adding vertical levels, minecart levels were also changed and added a variety of mechanics. And of course, the animal buddies were back, bringing with them a whole new play set of moves. And you didn't just ride them now, you actually directly controlled them. The list goes on of all the improvements Rare had made to show the world that they can make a platformer that rivaled Super Mario World. And some even say it does. What Rare games did you guys like the best? Let us know in the comments below. For more videos like this and everything else gaming related, you're already in the right place. You're on checknews.com. Hey guys, Greg here. I just wanted to thank everybody who's been supporting me over the years. And this was my 100th top 10 video. It's a really big milestone for me. I'm really happy that I'm able to do these for Shaq and for you guys. I appreciate people who watch them. Shout out to you, Bad Kitty, Captain Zork, and our community over at Shaq News who gives me ideas if I may be lacking in certain areas, especially in 90s PC games, because I didn't own a PC in the 90s, but a lot of our community did. As the 100th episode, this was one of the best videos I think I've done. But anyway, I wanted to thank everybody for continuing to support me and Shaq News in making all these videos, my arcade corners, my top tens, and other videos we post on a weekly basis. If you want to support us more, all you have to do is like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I hate saying that because it sounds so insincere, but if I'm looking at you and asking you to do it, I think it feels less sincere. 100 episodes of my top 10. I have a whole list of them going down. The further you go down, the worse my VO gets because I was new. I also want to shout out to Screw Attack Craig. I know he's not with Screw Attack anymore and Nervous Nick. My early days in college, they inspired me to do stuff like this and now I get to do it. So anyway guys, thank you for your continued support for me and Check News. Make sure to like and subscribe to the video and follow us on Twitter. Follow me and Check News on Twitter. We love fan interaction. So anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this and I look forward to making many more videos for you guys. Thank you.